سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ سبحان اللہ شکر اللہ الحمد للہ وی ڈو ہیو سم کوشچن رشید صاحبہ اف یو کین اسپیئر اباؤٹ ففٹین ٹوینٹی منٹس پلیز یس سو یسٹر ڈے یو مینشن سم آف دی مولا بابا اسپیچز سم ون از آسکنگ ڈو یو ہیو لائک اے لسٹ آف پرٹیکولر اسپیچز دیٹ یو ریکمینڈ انیشلی اینڈ دین آف کورس آل دی اسپیچز آر امپورٹنٹ Molana Hazimam has made something like seven, eight hundred speeches so far. Um, you know, he, he's in Mahmoud, he's 60, uh, well, 63 years now. Um, if you take every year and multiply that by three, four, five, you know, he's made many, many speeches. So I'm afraid I haven't actually, um, you know, put them in a priority order. My uh, hobby, like I said, you know, <laughs> Islamic architecture and design and calligraphy has been a hobby of mine from 1976 when there was a World of Islam festival here in Britain. And it, you know, had amazing exhibitions and things like that. And when I was at McGill, I took a group of 17 smileys from McGill, mostly from the student uh, community. Uh, on a 17-hour train journey to Washington to see uh, an Islamic exhibition there at the Smith, Smith, Smithsonian Institute. So my interest has always been in that, and therefore I started reading Hazi Imam's architecture speeches first. Because the, the, the topic is architecture, but it's all about the spirituality of Islam. But you know, equally, Hazar Imam has made so many amazing, amazing speeches all over the world. Uh, you know, on every topic that you, uh, you know, wish to mention. You know, once he spoke in, uh, to the World Bank, when uh, the head of the World Bank was that uh, person called Louis Hong. And he uh, gave a speech on um, technology in our world. And uh, the, the president of the World uh, Bank, who introduced Mawlana Hazim Imam, said, uh, aren't we lucky that today the direct descendant of the Holy Prophet is going to talk to us about technology? <laughs> so there is nothing the Imam has not talked about. He's talked about health, he's talked about the environment, he's talked about the architecture, he's talked about economics, technology, uh, everything. So what I say to you, somebody who has not started yet, is perhaps if you read that 1979 first speech of architecture of Asia society, and then after that just read whatever you, uh, you fancy. But keep reading. You know, make, uh, uh, you know today's Navros, make an, uh, an, an intention, a good intention, that you will read at least Three speeches a week. That's how I would do it, yes? Yeah, that, that is a lot of homework. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I agree with you on that 100%. So next one is, Quran says, God created man only for ibadat. Does Quran elaborate on what is meant by ibadat? Ritual prayers or more? Certainly, certainly. Not only the Quran, but all Islamic literature. So we have a look at the word Ibadat. Uh, ibadat is an Arabic word, and it uh, also has the same root as Abd. Abd. You know, we have the name Abdullah, servant of God. Yeah? Servant of Allah. So Abd. Abd, Ibadat. Yeah? And in Farsi, the same word Ibadat is called Bandagi. And Bandagi comes from the word Banda. Banda means servant. And Bandagi means that which the Banda does. Okay? So, yes, you are right that God says that he has created human beings and jinn for, uh, so that they should worship him. So the word Ibadat then means to 
serve, not just to worship. And I haven't had the chance to do this uh, research, um, uh, but I was, I, I, there is a, in my mind, this word which I hear a lot in our dinans, Shreva, Shreva. Not Seva, Shreva. And this word, I have to do research on it, and I think I will have to ask my friend, Professor Shafiq Mirani, to help me because he knows Sanskrit. That Shreva means both to remember and to serve. But I have, as I say, I have to do my research on it. I haven't had the chance to do that. So, yes, all Islamic literature will tell you that ibadat or bandagi service is of two kinds. One is ill and the other is knowledge. Uh, sorry, one is ill, knowledge, and the other is amal or deen. Because like I explained to you, you cannot serve without knowledge. You know, it, look at the secular society we live in. Can you walk into a school and say, I'm going to start teaching? You will be asked, where is your teaching certificate? In the same way, just because it is our faith and religion, that, that doesn't make it inferior. In fact, religion and spirituality is, is more important than the material world because it, it is a spiritual side which is eternal. The material world is going to finish. It's indefinite. It will finish at a certain point, no matter how many uh, degrees we may have acquired. So, yes, in religion too, we should have this notion of meritocracy, of best practice, and to understand that you cannot serve without knowledge. You know, when Imam says, time and knowledge, Nazrana, he's asking qualified people who have to take off a year or so from their careers and go and serve somewhere in the world. But again, we see a Jamaat has taken that in a secular sense. You think the Imam doesn't mean spiritual knowledge, if you have it, share it with others? So it is we who really narrow down the Imam's words. We do not expand the Imam's words to cover both the material and the spiritual. And the intellectual, because intellectual is the highest part of spiritual. The intellect. Imam keeps saying our faith is a faith of intellect. The minute he says that, it means knowledge. Do, do you agree with me? 100%. Yes. So next question on the Ibadat. So we talked about ibadat, ilmi ibadat and amli ibadat. And then there is the rohani betul khyal ibadat. Is one higher than the other? Or how do we understand this three kind of ibadat? Um, I don't know if uh, I would actually uh, split it like that, right? So in the ibadat of action, not uh, of deeds, yeah? That includes everything. Uh, sitting in Ibadat is an action. Okay? For all year or any time, this is an action. It's a, it, it, you do something. You do Ibadat. Okay? Whereas knowledge, so let me ask the questioner this, okay? That we, we Alhamdulillah, with Imam's grace, uh, he gave us the blessing of uh, Baal or Ismayazam and we are with his help again regular in our Ibadat of Parodia. What do you think? Is, is this Ibadat going to uh, be without its challenges? Will, will there not be certain events in your Ibadat journey which you need to know what's happening? So that means you need knowledge. You know, um, uh, I should share this with you, that um, Maulana Sultan Muhammad Shah Salwatullahi Alayhi used to send Farsi farmans to the Jamaat of Badakhshan, Farsi. And those were written by somebody in Mumbai, 
And uh, then Molana Sultan Osha used to use uh, several seals so that when it reached its destination, people would recognize that seal and know that this Farman was from Molana Sultan Muhammad Shah. One of the seals of Molana Sultan Muhammad Shah had a Persian inscription. And the Persian inscription says, Quran Tamam Wasf Kamali Muhammadas. This is Farsi. Quran Tamam, the complete Quran, is in praise, Wasf, in praise of the perfection of Muhammad, the Holy Prophet. The whole of the Quran. Now, those of you who have uh, started reading the Quran, in the Zahiri words, you will not find this perfection of Muhammad. Only in some verses, like the, uh, you know, um, the, the surah where, you know, he goes on his miraj or surah Muzammil or whatever. But this seal says the entire Quran is the description of the perfection of Muhammad, praise of the perfection of Muhammad, spiritual perfection. For that you need Bhaktini esoteric knowledge. And that exists in the Ismaili community because we have the recognition of the Imam of the time who is the door to the knowledge of the Prophet. So what I'm saying now is that Paroli Ibadat on its own will also have limited benefit. You need knowledge to recognize what happens in your spiritual journey. I hope I've answered this question. That's yes. Because so, uh, those yes. So, the Betul Khyal Ibadat with Ilm will benefit us much greater than just the Ibadat. Thank you. That, that actually answers the next question which I was about to ask, but you already covered it. So next question is about the charity. So in our tariqa, we take AKDN as the only uh, project of way of charity. How do we know which other one if we wanted to contribute to, we can pick? And how do we know our money will be going to the right place? It's, it's a full question. Yeah, I think you know, uh, it's not only the Jamaat, but uh, everybody. You know, I remember that when I was at the Institute, once uh, Oxfam of Britain, Oxfam had a meeting with Hazar Imam there at that uh, building in which the uh, Oxfam agreed to help Pakistan only if the money went to Hazar Imam's uh, organization, right? Okay. So, yeah, you're quite right that, you know, uh, it is well known that Molana Hazimam uses every penny of the, uh, of the donation which comes to his institution for, uh, for the work that it is meant to do, and all the ad admin costs are borne by the Imam himself, okay? So, we, are, we have total confidence that whatever we give will reach its... Uh, uh, destination. But, you know, in the country in which you live, you know, I'm sure that you are also knowledgeable about the society in which you live. And yes, you know, in uh, Britain, for instance, in spite of the economic downturn, you know, these three uh, things that I was talking about on the BBC, one of them is called Children in Need. And that happened last year towards the end. In spite of the economic downturn, uh, down, they raise the same amount as the previous year. So people give, and you know, they show how it is used. Uh, so if you have such things in your country, then you should be the judge of whether you want to help such uh, organizations or not. I think all of us have some, uh, uh, you know, personal thing. Uh, for instance, uh, I uh, was in a family of seven, my second eldest sister went blind uh, through glaucoma at the age of 17. So I have grown up with the disadvantage of blindness. So 
I personally give to those charities which help blind people all over the world. So, you know, it, you know it, there has to be some sort of personal thing as well as definitely imams, uh, institutions do amazing work. And even the outsiders admit that. And uh, yes, we can do that, but then your own uh, personal choice and your society amongst whom you live. But it's not only always through money that you help, yes? It is through time. You could do it through time. Uh, you, can, you can join those charities and give them help, secretarial help, technical help, admin help, whatever. You know, the, the choice is unlimited. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Uh, the next question, I think we are back to the previous question. So between the Seva and the Bethul Kyal Ibadat, uh, which one is greater? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's take the example of Pir Sadhuji. <laughs> yeah? Let's take the example of Pir Sadhuji. You don't think that his seva was great, you know, walking all the way from Iran to India and then converting all these thousands into his Ismaili faith? But at the same time, they say he used to do 18 hours of Ibadah. <laughs> That's what I've heard from wise and other, you know, knowledgeable people. You know, I don't think it's one or the other. You know, I chose that uh, balance, that pair of scales to show that both these things are important in the Ismaili Tarika because the Ismaili Tarika is the Tarika of intellect. You can't have one without the other, yeah? Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So there is a multiple question in, so I can say it all together or I can break it down. So the esoteric interpretation of Ismaili Tariqa, Imam in his Golden Jubilee for Amin had talked about it. Do we know the status of it? That's one question. A second, we don't see much of the esoteric teaching or interpretation given to us in our Jamaat Khana. How do we understand this? No, it is not in the Golden Jubilee only that the Imam said, you know. I think I quoted in one of my lectures that Parman, which was made to the Ismaili Association of Pakistan in 1960, was it two weeks before? Anyway, uh, you remember the one where he says, you know, we, we should not reread and reread and reread third hand and fourth hand interpretation, right? You don't only get muddled up. That we should go to the primary source. You remember that? So he gave that information at that time because, you know, the Imam doesn't wait until his golden jubilee to alert the Jamaat that we are uh, Batinis. You know, our historical name uh, is Batiniyun and Ta'alimiyun. You know that. I mean, I didn't mention that because I didn't remember it. Uh, but we have been known throughout our 1400 years of history as the Batiniyun, the esotericists, and the Ta'liniyun, those who believe in Ta'lim. Ta'lim means a transmission of ill knowledge, which is done by the Imam of the time. So, first, let's be clear that, you know, from the word go, the Ismaili Tarika as the Tarika of the bad thing because we didn't give up the light. We kept the light and the book. Like the Quran says, from Allah has come unto you light and the book. We have both these things. That's what the Prophet said at Dadi Akum. And we are the only Jamaat that have both these things now. And we have every confidence that this will born until the end of time because that's what our preamble of the constitution says. Okay? Right. So we we'll answer that first question now. Why don't we have these esoteric teachings during Jamaat Khana time? 
Number one is that you need people who have knowledge of these reservations. So first and foremost, uh, Jamaat has to approach the institutions and tell them to include this type of training in their uh, training programs, like uh, IWTP, the International Rising Training Program, right? That's where you start. You first develop people. So one of the reasons could be that we don't have enough people in uh, across the world who are capable of conveying the esoteric knowledge. And there could be other reasons as well. The other reasons could be, uh, you know, in the Western world, particularly lack of time, you know, risings have been cut down, cut down to what are called capsule rises, you know, 10 minutes flat. You know, 10 minutes flat is not... Uh, enough time to develop these uh, uh, very deep concepts, right? Uh, we should maybe take uh, the example of what the Fatimids did. You know, they had built masjids for the practice of Sharia, but in the Imam's palace, as I told you in my previous lecture, that uh, the great Dai, like Sayyid al Muyatidin Shirazi, they were delivering what were called majalis. They had majlisid assemblies where they discussed the ta'wil of the Qur'an. And talking about the ta'wil for the, of the Qur'an, I did notice one question uh, which I think I need to answer uh, uh, about ta'wil. Whoever asked that question, please know that ta'wil is a process. So you cannot write the ta'wil of the Qur'an now and say that this is now going to last for hundreds of years. You cannot do that. We changes with the time and circumstances, okay? It's a process. The Quran itself says that, okay? So you need to know that Ismailis never uh, did a... Uh, 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 Ismailis do not even do a translation of the Quran completely because again that gets fixed in, in stone. But they do uh, the translation of Quranic ayats in their lectures like Tayna al Moyat did, right? Or Nasik Israel. And similarly, the Sadhuddin would have done that uh, in the Sindhaginans, but because we don't have knowledge, we don't recognize that this is the Tawil of the Quran. So, um, there are two questions left, and uh, after that, if there is any more, uh, we will ask for your permission. The next one is on Novoros. In one of your previous old lectures, you had mentioned when Earth or the moment turn their face toward the Sun, there is the day of Novoros. It's been a while. Could you elaborate on that just for a second, please? I, I, I think it's in this present lecture that I talk about it right at the beginning. Um, when a moment, um, how should we put it? Because it's a whole lecture on its own, right? So I have to abbreviate things in my mind before I say them in a in an answer form uh, to a question. That for us, the symbol of Nagore. It is that in the northern hemisphere, the sun is physically closer to us, right? Because they don't have access. And because of this tilt, from 21st March, the sun is physically closer. That, that's why the temperatures are higher and the light is brighter. Okay? So, this is all physical. Now, in Bakin, if a moment purifies his heart and soul through Parman Bandari, performs all that is required of him in Ibadat and, you know, Amal and Il, then the day the Imam's noor shines on him as it did for Pernasirik Israel in that final, uh, you know, slide I showed you, then that is your new beginning because that, from that time, uh, it's not that, you know, in spirituality, the light of the Imam doesn't shine on you and then disappears like the physical sun. The light of the Imam remains with you. And in fact, 
what an Azimam has been saying in recent months, he has been saying that I won't, I won't like to be in your heart and I want that light to guide you. Yeah? So that's the meaning of the Batin in our rose, that the Imam's light is reflected in you, in your own personality, in your soul. But for that, your, the mirror of your soul must be free from all dust, rust, anything dirty. It should be polished so much that the light of the Imam will reflect in it. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So last one is m more like a comment than a question. But I, I think it's a very good comment. So uh, it says, I asked earlier why we don't have the Tawil or the Tafsir of the Quran published by IIS. I, it never dawned on me that Tawil changes on daily basis in the time and the age. Thank you for saying that because I never thought of that or understood that part. <laughs> yeah, you see, that shows, doesn't it, that we need a lot of knowledge, you know. You should read some of the things that Maulana Ali said and then compare them with what Maulana Sultan, Mahavisha, Salwatullah, Yalayu, or Maulana Azriman said. There's a world of difference, you know. Times have changed. 1440 years have passed. The world is not the same place. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. I'm glad, I'm glad that person has understood that. And maybe uh, if they can go to the Mono Reality website and start reading otherwise Dr. Fakir Mohanzai's lectures and the articles, it will help them to understand about the will of the Quran much more, much more. I, I personally today have to tell you all that whatever I'm sharing with you, is what I have learned from him and from Alama Nasir bin Hunzai. Excuse me, is that on the Institute website? No, it's uh, www.monoreality.org. Thank you. Uh, someone has posted the link on the uh, chat for the modernity.com. Uh, the Kamre Sahib, do we have any more question? Otherwise, we have a request from one of the gentlemen asking if you could recite the Dua and Noor once again about the 16 uh, sites of Noor, please. 16, actually, it's 16. Um, yes, I can do that. Uh, in fact, I wanted to do it in Arabic, but then uh, I didn't want to bore people because we don't understand Arabic. Um, this again is in the Book of Healing and it is in a chapter called Con The Concept of the Waves of Light on page 140. Um, we, because we recite it every day, it has become part of our um, practice. In Arabic it is Allahum Aj Ali, Allahum Aj Ali, Noor and Fi Kalbi, Wa Noor and Fi Sambi, Wa Noor and Fi Basari, Wa Noor and Fi Lisani, Wa Noor and Fi Sha'ari, Wa Noor and Fi Bashari, Wa Noor and Fi Lahmi, Wa Noor and Fi Dami, Wa Noor and Fi Zami, Wa Noor and Fi Asabi, Wa Noor and Min Daini, Ya Daiya, Wa Noor and Min Kalbi, Wa Noor and An Yamini, Wa Noor and An Yasari, Wa Noor and Min Fawki, and the English is, O oh Allah, make for me a light in my heart and a light in my ear and a light in my eye and a light in my tongue and a light in my hair and a light in my skin and a light in my flesh, and a light in my blood, and a light in my bones, and a light in my nerve, and a light in front of me, and a light behind me, 
and the light on my right hand side and the light on my left side and the light above me and the light below me and this is also taken from the Daimul Islam part one. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So that was the last request I have. Kamri Sahib, do we have anything you'd like to ask or anyone else? Otherwise we can stop here. Yes, I don't see any questions anymore. Thank you, Kamri Sahib. Thank you, Rashida Sahiba. Thank you so much. Just for everyone's information, Rashida Sahiba will be back again next Saturday and Sunday. Inshallah, we will send the topics and announcement. Uh, starting Monday. Thank you again for your time. Ya Ali Madad. Thank you. Thank you all of you for listening and a very, very happy and now goes Mubarak to you all. Thank you. Thank you and Ya Ali Madad. Thank you very much. Ya Ali Madad. Thank you. 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 Ya Ali Madad.